Okay, I spent way too much time picking this t-shirt, so I'm going to remove this so you can enjoy it. This is not me writing dark code, by the way, this is just coincidence. So I'm going to be talking about how programming in Dart uh, has made me a worse JavaScript developer. Um, it's a weird topic coming from a right front-end engineer, but we'll see how it goes. Um, okay. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> this was fun. So why did you pick the t-shirt? <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that later. Great question, by the way. Okay, so I wanted to start with, uh, the, there was this trend on Twitter, like five engineers, three facts, or something like this, and people kept like mentioning each other, and I decided to do something similar. So my name is Boris, I'm a front-end developer at Reich, and, well, first fact, I majored in Asian and African studies, and I actually uh, read medieval Persian manuscripts at university, so I didn't do much JavaScript or Dart development back in the day. And I try to hug as many cats as I can, because, you know, I'm a cat person, and I, whenever I see, go to visit my friend who has a cat, I, like, I come prepared, I bring all the treats, and I lure them in, and I hug them. Not every owner loves that, but, well, <laughs> why do I care? <laughs> like, and I also look horrifying in face app. Maybe it's horrifying for me, but, Let's see. Okay, maybe that's just for me seeing myself in like 60 years is horrifying. And I also only use fresh meat. Like FaceApp is very current and relevant, right? It's ever, what everybody's talking about. Not. So, uh, how did I start writing Dart? Um, it was March 2018 uh, when I uh, left my after my second uh, technical interview. Uh, I accepted the offer right away, and uh, according to the Russian legislation, you have to uh, like spend two weeks after you uh, decide to leave, uh, like wrapping things up. And uh, I, when I came uh, came to work the next day, I told my uh, co-workers that I was going to be working at Reich, and uh, you know I was told by my interviewers that uh, they use Angular Dart, and I thought I was developing in Angular back in the day, and I thought, well, Angular, I know Angular, right? Dart, whatever, it's Angular. So, uh, two hours later, one of my uh, colleagues uh, sent me a link to an article, and the article was titled, Worst Programming Languages to Learn in 2018. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like it was like first place. I know Alexi in the previous talk was uh, like giving you different statistics, but this was 2018, and I thought, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, I decided to give it a shot. And uh, here's a list of what I think uh, like good JavaScript developers do. Uh, and I'm just gonna uh, briefly tell you how I'm not any of those things. Uh, right, so React hooks. Uh, this was, okay, is this, how do I go back? Okay, so starting with the monitor and eagerly tried new technologies and frameworks, right? So uh, as I imagine, JavaScript developers uh, should stay up to date with all the technologies. They should uh, like follow, uh, like, Dan Abramov and Minko Gechev and Vitaly Friedman on Twitter, and you know they should uh, be really into this stuff, and they should uh, constantly uh, share all the news about like uh, modern uh, libraries with their colleagues. This is how they grow, and this is uh, what I don't do. So, the story uh, about React hooks. So I remember my uh, coworker. Uh, told me that when React hooks were just mentioned, they were an alpha, and he told me, you know, have you seen this? This is amazing. This is gonna revolutionize React. This is gonna, like, uh, render class-based components obsolete, and, like, this is absolutely amazing. This is, uh, like, the new web. And I said, well, cool. We're 
writing in Dart, so what, what am I supposed to do with this information? And uh, he, he was really enthusiastic about it, and I was just like keeping an eye on him. Uh, and uh, I saw him like every couple of weeks or so, like uh, give me the updates. Like, um, you know, he was young then, he only started with Dart back then, and uh, he was giving me updates, you know, that they added this hook, they added this hook, they added, uh, like, you can write your own custom hooks, and, uh, you know, you can do so many things with hooks, maybe you don't need Redux with hooks, like, this is amazing. And uh, I thought, am I wrong to not care about it, to not, uh, like, follow Dan Abramov, and to not uh, read about hooks? I still, I'm not really sure how you stay or use effects work, and uh, you know this is what I kept seeing on Twitter, like people um, mentioning Dan Abramov, uh, who is like w one of the people working in Facebook on, on the React team, is uh, the creator of Redux, and uh, he's like uh, one of the big endorsers of React Hooks, and people kept mentioning him and asking him questions, and this was endless, like Dan Abramov, I can't. Uh, work this out, this is not working, and this is, I, what do I do with that? So eventually Dan Abramov said he was taking a small break from Twitter. <laughs> of course, this was for uh, a whole other, other reason. This was because of the, this thing, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you don't, just Google it. Uh, Dan Abramov, okay sign. So, uh, what does this have to do with me? So. This uh, whole story took about, I don't know, five, six months. And I realized that if I only started following this, like if I only learned about React Hooks today, I would just read the documentation when it was ready, after all of those people had asked Dan Abramov all of those questions, after Dan Abramov had taken a break from Twitter. Whenever the ecosystem is ready, I can start using it. I don't need to spend all those, you know, endless weeks scrolling Twitter feed and, you know, keep, uh, keep, keeping uh, up to date with all the trends. And I thought, well, this is probably okay. So my next story is about Svelte. Like Svelte Jazz is like uh, all the rage right now. It's a beautiful framework that revolutionized the web. I watched the Rich Harris, the creator of Svelte, uh, I, I watched his talk and I was impressed, like, wow, uh, React is, is dead, like, uh, Svelte is amazing. So I decided to give it a shot and um, I had an idea for a pet project and I thought, well, uh, Svelte it looks kind of interesting, uh, why don't I try to implement my idea with Svelte. And I started doing that. And, well, I had a backend ready and um, written in Go by a, another developer, and I just needed some few uh, simple things. So I finished the tutorial, and I started implementing the idea. Um, then I ran into some issues, like I didn't know how to do state management, I uh, needed a router, and uh, then I saw a comment from Rich Harris that, you know, we don't ship router with Svelte because every developer should be able to write his own router. I said, like, duh, really? Why can't I just, why can't you write one for me and I just use it and I'll decide if I want to write my own. But it was, uh, it was fine. So then I googled, um, like, existing Svelte projects, something like this. And you know, I, I love this uh, 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 this website. It's like a Tumblr blog. It says pictures of people scanning QR codes. Because how is this relevant? This is very similar to what I saw. So there are no posts yet. And this was similar to what uh, existing Svelte projects was when I started it. Right now, it looks good. And I think now would be probably a good time to start looking at, into Svelte. Maybe I'd wait two more months. So, uh, like I said, uh, me not following all this, um, all these discussions on Twitter actually saved me a lot of time. So I might not be 
you know, a, a good uh, JavaScript developer, but somehow I decided that I was okay with that. Uh, of course, there is another uh, very popular, not popular, but the technology that a lot of people talk about in the front end community, and uh, it's Reason ML, that, uh, which is a technology that compiles to JavaScript, and uh, yeah, it's not really very popular yet, and uh, doesn't have a big community. So I thought, well, this sounds familiar because I'm writing Dart, remember? Um, so, uh, new technologies, I decided that they do scare me. Maybe it has something to do with, my, uh, with me aging, but uh, usually the problems are that there are very few code samples um, available, and uh, usually there are not enough Stack Overflow answers, and I'm not the kind of guy who like posts new questions on Stack Overflow. I sometimes do answer people's questions, but posting new questions, that's like, I don't know, not ready for this yet. And, uh, you know, I prefer to wait for big projects, to big, for big companies to uh, run into all the bugs, all the uh, bottlenecks and pitfalls, and find solutions, and then I'll probably be ready to use the technology. And of course, the irony is that all of these problems are perfectly applicable to Dart, so yeah, uh, this sounds familiar. Now, uh, let's get to the second point. This is supposed to be in bold, but let's imagine it is. I like, uh, always know what this refers to. Of course, this, there are so many memes about it, there are so many jokes about it. I just found one. Uh, so, the problem with JavaScript is that you, the context, you lose context and you uh, need to bind the context and of course there are different contexts, uh, there are all kinds of uh, cheat sheets that you can find and uh, here's just an example, um, back in my uh, previous job uh, I had a colleague of mine actually uh, who printed this out and uh, kept it at his desk at all time. So this is uh, what the, this keyword usage looks like in Dart, right? So uh, you use it for some syntactic sugar when you need to uh, pass uh, the parameters into constructor and assign them to the uh, properties. And sometimes you need this uh, for overshadowing. So you have a parameter called ID and you have a field uh, that is also called ID. So you, you do something like this ID equals ID, just not to confuse them. Yeah, there are probably a couple more cases I could think of, but you know, for the purpose of this presentation, this should do. So, yeah, I completely forgot about this problem. So, if I ever go back to JavaScript, I'll have to like memorize this whole uh, cheat sheet again. And uh, what about those neat JavaScript tricks? A uh, couple of examples of what I'm talking about. So, you know about uh, object destructuring? Uh, so, if you have an object like this, like deeply nested, how would I get uh, to the first name of uh, the user object? Well, I would do something like this, like dot chaining. And this is what some uh, cool JavaScript developers do. Like, it's destructuring, and it looks so amazing, and it looks like magic to me. Honestly, uh, Dart now has object destructuring, and uh, we haven't uh, used it yet, because if you've worked in a big project before, you'll know how it can be not always easy to migrate from a, uh, like an older version to a newer version of a technology. Uh, because you have usually multiple repositories, you have uh, like tens of people working on it, so uh, we, we are getting there eventually, and when we do, when we do uh, need to write the destructuring, I'll be horrified again, but I hope I'll manage. And this is another case, uh, so uh, let's say you, you still need to get the first name of the user, but what if your user is undefined? or the user is okay, but the name is undefined. So if you do something like this in JavaScript, right? 
user and and username and and username last. In Dart, we do something like this because uh, you know that chaining, uh, like optional chaining, uh, uh, has been present in, in Dart for I don't know how many years. Uh, so. Actually, this morning I read that uh, JavaScript, uh, like Bagel, can now support this in JavaScript as well, which is cool. Uh, so at least this is one one thing where I won't suck at JavaScript when I if, if I ever decide to go back. So uh, choosing um, from uh, a lot of existing solutions. So of course there are libraries in JavaScript. There are libraries for everything, and. Uh, Sometimes it's a real problem to, uh, f well, you have a problem and you can write your own solution or you can uh, find an existing one. Why reinvent the, the wheel? So uh, you go to NPM and let's say you need a simple memorization and you find like 358 packages, right? And uh, how do you pick one? Right, so usually, of course, there are uh, the top two or three that are approved by the community that have, have a lot of stars on GitHub. And, uh, well, I can't really, I'm not really good at choosing this because when you Google something in Dart Packet Manager, the pub, you get eight, which is, you know, solid. And uh, uh, only the first one actually has something to do with memoization. The seven other ones just mention it in the description. And this is the library that was written at Reich, by the way. So, <laughs> the uh, basically, this is my uh, conclusion for this point. So if there is a good Dart library for something, uh, well, chances are that it was written at Reich at some point, and it was published uh, to the package manager. And if it isn't, if there, if there isn't, you'll probably write it yourself, which is also fun, you know, uh, if you haven't written anything for the open source yet, this the Dart like is perfect uh, playground. You can write so many things, just sometimes by just copying existing solutions from JavaScript, like porting them to Dart. But honestly, uh, the Dart SDK that Alexi was uh, telling you about actually is pretty good. Like uh, Dart Collection is a great uh, library which has all the you know the linked lists and hash maps and all kinds of data structures. They are already in the SDK. So there are certain things uh, for which we don't need libraries because actually Google has already provided them. And finally. Um, you know, uh, PWA, like progressive web apps, are uh, also uh, and, uh, a very popular topic nowadays. There are entire conferences dedicated to PWAs, and uh, there are many uh, JavaScript to mobile technologies. Uh, well, there's, of course, React Native, and there's NativeScript, and there's Cordova, and there's Ionic, which is like an Angular wrapped around Cordova. I spent some time developing an app in Ionic, which was quite painful, and uh, the problem was that it still didn't feel really like native, and it sometimes froze, and it felt like uh, a little laggy. So it wasn't uh, a very enjoyable experience coding it, and it wasn't unfortunately a very enjoyable experience using it. Um, so in Dart, we don't have this problem. So I kind of suck at all of those technologies because, of course, as we already learned, uh, one framework to rule them all is Flutter. Uh, I haven't written much code in Flutter, by the way, but I like to think that if sometimes, if it really gets popular, it is popular right now, but if it really succeeds, I'll be ready. Like, I'll know Dart and um, I'll be ready to go. So, well, this was supposed to be one word, believe it or not, so what is FOMO? <laughs> Uh, FOMO uh, is the fear of missing out. So I, I've been asked uh, several times by uh, my uh, former co-workers who still work with TypeScript and JavaScript, like, um, aren't you afraid of like getting stuck in this uh, like technology that is unpopular that not many people use? And uh, I thought about this a lot. So there are some questions that I ask myself, like how will I catch up with the JavaScript world? Like, uh, what if uh, by the time I, for some reason, decide to stop writing Dart code, uh, it gets 
so far ahead that I won't be able to catch up. And uh, who will want to hire me with, without any of those you know, relevant uh, skills? Like, of course, there are younger people that are like 19-year-old tech leads who can write a Webpack config with their eyes closed, and I still have to Google this stuff when I, uh, for some reason, decide to do it. So, um, well, I thought that um, there are things that aren't going anywhere. Uh, of course, uh, web is still based uh, uh, around HTML and CSS, and uh, there's this event loop. There's like this. Uh, there's main thread, and there, the event loop works uh, the same uh, in JavaScript and in Dart and in uh, all the technologies that compile to JavaScript. So. At least if I know how this works, I won't have to Google it again. And uh, algorithms, algorithms and data structures aren't going anywhere, and architectural patterns and uh, like basic principles like solid and dry. And uh, I've managed to learn it while working uh, with Dart and uh, without uh, seeing a single line of JavaScript code for, for like a year and a half. And of course the experience. So this is something you, you you kind of read in the book and it's also not going anywhere hopefully so i think i'm going to be fine this is uh, the conclusion i came to so uh thank you very much this is how you can contact me if you for some reason want to i'll be of course here and uh, i hope uh, you've learned something and uh, i hope this was enjoyable for you as it was for me so thanks a lot